I am Sarah Ryan. I'm the Director of Individual Giving at the BASS. I'm also joined this evening uh, by my colleague Daphna Starr, who will be on a little bit later to facilitate the um, Q&A session following this conversation. Um, if you have questions at any point, though, you can go ahead and put them in the chat or email membership at thebass.org, whatever your preference. Um, lastly, I just want to thank and welcome our speakers for this Bass member exclusive conversation. We are joined by Tyler Emerson Dorsch, partner of Emerson Dorsch Gallery, our very own Leilani Lynch, curator at the Bass, and uh, finally the artist that has brought our two organizations together this evening, the wonderful Karen Reifus. Um, thank you all so much for joining us and I'll turn it over to you, Leilani. Great, um, great. Hi everyone, uh, good evening. Hi Karen, hi Tyler. Thanks so much for being here everyone and for the panelists for joining us. Um, it's nice to see everybody virtually. So, so here we are talking to you, Karen. Um, I thought maybe we could start by just taking a, a little trip to the past and just kind of setting the, the tone of our, um, our relationship working together, which really started in 2018, I think, leading up to your show um, at the BAS that was called Deceptive Constructions. Maybe you could just um, tell us a, a tiny bit about the show and kind of where you were at in your practice in 2018 and if that kind of now two years later you felt like that was a um, turning point or anything kind of changed since then well i do believe that you visited emerson dorsch gallery and you saw my show there mm -hmm. and um and i was so happy that you invited me to do an installation and i want to thank you and sylvia uh, for for providing me an opportunity like this uh, it's it's a beautiful room. Um, I guess it's had some renovations, but it has some architectural features that I really thought about incorporating. Uh, the the L-shaped frames are a, a picture in the back that was made especially for the bass as I was in, installing the work. I realized that um, it needed this one um, focal point uh, to pull it all together. And so this was actually the biggest piece that I had made and it was made just just for the show. The L shape is exactly the same height as the door that's to the left. I'm sure uh, people from the Bass know that. And then um, playing with all levels of the space, the um, panels at the top and the this little uh, pink chair to the bottom, it almost looks transparent because it picks up the um, the floorboard, so you can see it. It so so these little opportunities to to play with the architecture of the space were very exciting to me. And this whole idea about this is that um, I realized that I I want to go bigger and do this so that the so that one feels a part of the of a, a, a large uh, eight foot by eight foot painting, just like one would feel from an installation. Yeah, I think um, what was really great to see you at this time really expanding into um, larger scale and, and kind of like working with with architecture and and I loved I, I still have such fond memories about this show and really how we um, kind of captured your recent explorations into like two, 2D and 3D um, geometric abstraction, how you really kind of transform the space there. Um, but can you speak a little bit about maybe your, your art historical like touch points and who you, you know, as you were kind of like taking this deep dive into color and abstraction, geometry, who you were looking at? Well, I'd, 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 I'd have to say, um, well, first, and this is a surprise, I would have to say Duchamp, because Duchamp Ooh. said that um, the 
the person that views the work finishes the work or oh. is serend. So especially in these these works on on paintings, uh, paintings, I want it to follow through the same way as installation so that the viewer is there and from where the viewer is, the viewer is, is seeing what I'm seeing. But okay. back in, into history, I would have to say it was Malevich uh, because uh, he freed us from, from, the, from the pictorial image. We, we could just be abstract. So I would have to say Malevich, and then I would have to say De Still and, and Van Doesburg and Mondrian. And again, their idea was to have a total artistic experience, not just the artwork on the wall, but the, everything that went along with it. So, and, and then um, the, uh, from the Russian Constructivists and De Gilles, De Gilles, even the painting, uh, I was impressed by um, the blue riders and and mm. and and the, the the yellow cow. You know, Marx's yellow cow is a, is a, a high point, and and then more contemporary David Hockney, and uh, and then um, going back into Latin American uh, art, I I would say. Um, Ligia Clark and mm, yeah. you know, her her what you I don't know what you call them foldables but mm -hmm. but but how they change and the idea with my painting is that if you if you change position the what you're seeing changes so and Helia Attica from that period yeah uh, are some yeah. of them. And, and then that, was, uh, oh go ahead. Uh, of course, our goodies like uh, Donald Judd and, and Sal LeWitt, who have a structure that I always deal with. There's a, there's a structure involved in, in the art, and then I play the color and stuff against that. So I can I, definitely see, yeah, I can see that. I mean, in the, even in this image, thinking about um, the three-dimensional forms. But I love what you said about kind of freeing the artwork from the walls. Um, that, that kind of is a nice segue to the project that we worked on most recently and how to, you know, are continuing um, friendship and working at the Bass. Um, so it, I believe it was in 2019, you were awarded, right? 2019, yes. You were awarded uh, the Michael Richards Award, which is part of, which comes from Oolite Arts um, and is awarded to an artist uh, based in Miami who, who has a very high level of reached a high level in their career. And, um, and in 2019, they honored you. And part of that uh, meant that you would have a project at the Bass. So knowing that we already had had this exhibition, um, when I approached you, when Sylvia and I um, invited you to come think about something else, I think we, even pre-pandemic, we said, we were thinking like, let's, let's break outside the gallery. Let's maybe think about outside. I don't know if you remember that. Maybe that was in like January or something. Um, and now of course, here we are in the pandemic and, and we're, many of us are bound to our homes or we're not, you know, our museums are closed. And so this kind of brought about um, a new program, which um, I'm so excited for our members to see some of, some of which are already on view and you can come see them at the park, but it's called Art Outside. Um, and the idea here was to bring exactly that art outside of, of the walls of the museum and, and bring artwork into, into nature and into the environment. Um, oops, sorry. And, and, so, and so here you can see on the left, Karen's project, um, these banners that you've put around the park and, and just two other works that we also now have on view, Lawrence Wiener on the top right here, and then uh, a sound installation by Susan Phillips, which is on uh, towards the back of the museum. But Karen, so you put together in almost record time, about 32 banners where, where we usually have our park, um, kind of signage advertising what's inside the museum. So can you talk a little bit about, uh, first, thank you for just really attacking that task at full force, but also can you talk about what, what you ended up going with and, and how you um, approached this project? 
Okay. Well, I think we had, <laughs> we had two weeks, right? <laughs> Something like that. It was, you know. Less a weekend because I, I, you asked if I could do some manners and, and I said, well, do, do we have to do just one or, and you said, well, okay, I'm going to check and I'll like, you know, on Monday. And then it didn't matter how many different banners we had, but, but that we, we could just, I could just design 32 if I mm -hmm. wanted. And I, I said, I've got to meet this challenge. It's fun. It's a, it's a wonderful opportunity. So I, I um, went about it in two ways. One, I had a, a show up at Emerson or up at Emerson Dorsch. And I also, after that show was up, I was thinking about making other work. And so I was in this real progression that uh, the uh, COVID had started and I was like, either I'm going to do nothing or I'm going to go into overdrive. So I went into overdrive. And um, I thought about the, the spaces around the museum also, the, the section that's um, on Collins Avenue, the section yeah. that's uh, near where the dancers are, uh, the Miami City Ballet, and I wanted to put some of that emphasis in. And then there were little uh, light poles. They were all attached to the light poles. And the, um, th there was an area where the, the light poles were um, uh, on two sides of the sidewalk so that they could have a conversation with each other. And this one here, I had to have a conversation with this wonderful piece that's uh, a highlight of the vast. So, yeah. um, and interestingly enough, I see you, you have on the screen the, um, I, I worked with uh, 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 Frank and Casal and because I had worked with him on other projects where you had to transform the work into um, something that could be printable. And we were talking about color, and you see this is like a green or something or other, but I really wanted blue, and I said, we've got to try the blue. And, and we were hesitant because the blue would be just like the sky and it wouldn't show up, but I think it shows up well. And I love this little conversation going on with, with the two of them there. Yeah, I really love that you, um, you kind of took your surroundings into the work itself, like what we have here on the screen. Um, are you know your sketches with then next to the the digital kind of like translations that Frank worked on right but these two in particular look like um like palm trees or like nature trees to me kind of nature kind of uh the one on the left is uh, and, and also this kind of free flow as as a dancer that was kind of on that on it's actually it's near the parking lot right uh, where, yeah where you park but, but, um, and it has, and then the, uh, the uh, well, I don't remember what the other one, and this is an interesting transition because um, my drawing was one way and I said, mm, and I eliminated part of it and, and flipped it. So it, it, it flips inward and, and it's, it's a little different than I started it, but. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I love that even in the process of between drawing to digital to then printing, you are still kind of playing with space and seeing how it would best work with the architecture. Um, and here's here's the near you know the library and the ballet side. And here we have on the left um, on the light pole is one that relates back into the um, the exhibition I have up now, 2020. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, this is another favorite. Just the, kind of the ballet. And the ballet. And, and this also kind of relates to the sculptures that I have now in the gallery. Yeah, I mean, so perfect segue there. Maybe um, Tyler and, and Karen, you can talk a little bit about what's up at the gallery and, and 2020, the show. Oh, I think maybe Tyler is muted. Thanks, Leilani. <laughs> yeah. The, um, the last slide before with the, the almost dance-like yeah. Uh, form. The other thing that I saw right away and the reason why I like the image is because the salmon color relates to sidewalk. Mm, so I don't know true. how that happened. Karen is very sensitive. Yeah, very perceptive. All of these new kind of associ yeah. associations come out even after the work is installed. It's, it's really remarkable. I'm always surprised. Well, I, the, I drove around the block about four times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
so yes, our, our show, the show at the space is um, Karen's second show at the gallery. And uh, it's called 2020, 20 slash 20. Um, hindsight is 2020. It's a good pun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and for this show, she, she went from two eight foot by eight foot paintings at the Bass show to almost the entire show is eight foot by eight foot paintings. And they've all been made in the last two years. It's really remarkable. Um, the, this room that we're looking at now, the, the sculptures respond to the compositions in this room. They're Ooh. sort of made from them. And then uh, the maquettes for these sculptures were literally made from little pieces of folded paper that Karen brought in. I love that. Those were the concept drawings. Um, and, you know, the, the way they turned out, they're just beautiful. And they wouldn't have been possible without, I mean, first of all, the scale comes from the Basho and then the opportunity to make them really arose from getting the Michael Richards Award from Ulite. And, um, you know, really what a wonderful discovery to, to have, have made, um, that this is, this is within the range of, of possibility for Karen and all that, all, all the ideas that she's had, um, in the last few years. Yeah. It's awesome. And Ken, um, I'm so curious about, cause I love the way that this show kind of frames the work, the architecture in the gallery looks so almost so perfect. Like it was made especially for the show. Um, it are was. the walls? Yeah, it's, it's all intentional, <laughs> yeah. right? It was, I mean, not the entire, I mean, we can't rebuild the whole space, but <laughs> though the, I, I wish, right? Uh, in between every show. Uh, but the, the walls were different for the show before this. Um, we, uh, with Karen, we designed a partition wall that would fit these, these large paintings and in a symmetrical way. Um, many spaces ha favor uh, a particular hang um, and, and it, it can be very hard to, to break the space's own logic. Um, right. So we worked with it, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I just love how the, I mean, in this room, it's a little bit hard to see, but there's this wonderful skylight that just brings natural light into the space and it, it's just so luminous. Um, okay, so if pop. you can pause here, this is yeah. a good place because what you can't see in the image, you can see a hint of it, is that the entire room is bathed in a orange and pink light because of the reflection of the sunlight off of these big paintings. Mm -hmm. And and that's why it's worth it to go and see it in person. Definitely. Yeah. Karen, can you talk a little bit about uh, the palette and the color that you're that you're working with here? I see a lot of red and pink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, um, it's it's very um, uh, fleshy and lipsticky and uh, this is the right hand side. Um, and I'm, I'm just, I'm learning as I go. I'm, I'm just experimenting and putting colors together that don't necessarily uh, work, but, but back to Albers and back to the Bauhaus and back to experimentation. I want to see how these things uh, work together. So there, and, and, and I work in series. I, I, I do maybe four until, or until I get tired. Uh, or I've, I've pushed it as far as I think I can go and then switch over to the left and, and a different kind of palette. Um, so it, it's, 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 every day is exciting. Yeah. And <laughs> Karen yeah. is very precise. Sorry, I'll just interject very quickly yeah. about the palette. Um, she writes down the exact name of the color that she's mixed and and a list of those colors on the back of each painting mm. so she can go back and reference for herself what that palette was right and yeah because i think one of the um 
interesting things that you do, Karen, also is that shapes and palettes and um, kind of configurations, you, you, you actually do sometimes repurpose them or rework them into new works, right? Because I've seen that before where a shape looks somewhat familiar and then I think, oh, I think I've seen part of that before. And it turns out it's something you've done, but you've flipped it or you've like transformed it in some way. I enjoy, I enjoy that puzzle. Um, if you if you're looking straight ahead, um, the, there's four panels in the middle of the two different colors, uh, mm -hmm. and that is taking the center shaft of of that work and flipping it and flipping it and flipping it and flipping it. Mm -hmm. So it, it it it's another it's um, it's pushing the work, which is I, I guess my fun is you know where does it take me? You know? So and I've done that with other works in the gallery where I flip them uh, left to right and, and you, you get a whole whole different ball game going. Mm. But, but uh, again, it, you saw the graph paper that I did the original uh, for the outdoor pieces. Mm -hmm. I, just start, I, I have a structure that I need to, to work within and then mm. let it go. So I have this grid and then from there I just start making works and uh, lines until I'm I have something in my head and then I'm editing and changing and figuring out color um, until it's until I get something like this. <laughs> Lailani if you could just pause with this slide. Yeah. The uh, the the painting to the right this is, I, I think, Karen, do I have this right? Some of the, the compositional elements to the sculpture on the floor comes in part from this one and a little bit from the one on the left. And you can, I think it's fun to try and to f find its origin. Right. Um, and, and then again, um, this sculpture, um, is I mean that's how I started as, as a sculptor rather than a painter okay. and, and in sculpture I mean this little piece uh, that you see from different angles contracts so it did or, or the or expands or you just you just see parts of it and not all of it um, depending on your level and where you're standing in the room and that again repeats in the paintings I want that same puzzle to happen again so if you blink your eye um, a shape that is extending out into space recedes into space. So, um. yeah, and and the the sculptures. Um, I hope I think I have a photo. Well, yeah, I, I really wanted people to see, but it's so much better to see in person. How they're actually, if I'm not wrong, they're one piece of metal and it's kind of folded. Well, actually, Contrast. actually, they're two, but they're two the same shapes uh, were cut for all pieces. They were just flip flop the other way. Again, seeing how much I can do with, with the same thing. And, um, and then stretched and folded in, in different ways. Yeah, it's super interesting how um, they just appear to be defying gravity. They're so light and, and right. so sharp and exact in their shapes. Right. This, the way the view is, uh, the one on the left would not hold up in space. You just, <laughs> but but that's what's so wonderful about um, the sculptures and three Ds and and, but you, what you see is not really real. I mean, it's it's an all an illusion depending on your place place in space, and that's that's a, that's fun. That's <laughs> a good way to. To think about many things actually and then 2020 being the title it, it's kind of perfect we don't know what's really real anymore do we? <laughs> yeah um so i think it's actually 6 30 and we um we wanted to start also reminding the audience for questions i think we actually have quite a number of questions that have already been submitted um should we should we start with that Daphne? Yeah, that would be great. Hi, everybody. Nice to well, see everyone logged on. Welcome. Um, let me read out some of the questions I have and then um, everybody feel free to drop any more questions in the chat box. So one question says, Karen said she went into overdrive. How has it been keeping that momentum for five months? Great. 
<laughs> it's really great. Uh, um, you know, I, I, I have nothing else to do. I have, uh, I can keep the house dirty. Nobody's coming to see it. <laughs> and so I, I just, I love it. I take a little time out for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yes, eating is important. Um, another question. Uh, how did the height and the perspective of the banners, um, given that people will be looking up and looking at them from below, how did that affect um, your work process? You know, I, I didn't think about that so much. Um, I'm always looking up. I'm very short. <laughs> so um, I, I, I actually, that was something I did not consider. Um, there, were, there was a lot on my plate. One is color. One is using a dis different system from, from uh, paint to, what is it, CYMK is a whole new process to, to learn that. So I, I skipped a few, and one of them looking up. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I think it worked out, though, because um, you still, yeah, you, there are these accidental moments, like, you know, we, we find when they're actually installed that the, the perspective reveals more. Thank you. So uh, no. these these banners were uh, beautifully made. I mean, the 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 little lines around the that I have on the drawing is to to keep the the triangles within the space and to keep it organized. And they did a beautiful job of doing that. And then if you walk around the other side, it's the same image uh, flipped on the other side. So it's it's amazing how they did it. And yeah, I like it great. Mm -hmm. um, let me see, I have another question. What is next for Karen? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I have um, maybe an art and public places project coming up and a commission to do that's uh, for, uh, that I'm excited about working on. So that's what's up. Following on from that question, um, you mentioned that you started in sculpture and then you moved to painting and now you're, um, you know, you're creating more sculptures. Are you, through this exhibition, inspired to continue creating sculptures more? Well, um, I hadn't really uh, considered it yet. I'm still in my little uh, house. I, I used to do bronze casting and I could pour 400 pounds of bronze at a, at a time at UM. And, but um, fabrication is expensive. So I, um, I have to do a lot of paper models before I get to the next one. I think um, that's about it with wrapping up the questions. There is a question in the chat. Um, I'm gonna ask it though, you might have addressed some of it when you were speaking. Um, Laura says, Karen, I love the bright colors. They're so cheerful, especially given our circumstances today. And um, can you talk more about how you go into choosing what colors to work with and the combinations? You, you did touch on some of that, but I was wondering if you think about um, emotion when you're choosing these colors of maybe, you know, brightness in a dark time, or if that's something that you consider. Uh... I started out, well, I, the, the first paintings that, that I did that had, were really black and white. I mean, like Picasso starting back with, with that palette and then um, worked with a darker palette. And, and then somehow um, I'm, I'm using color to, to, to do two things. One is to emphasize form and to push things back and forward in space. And then, yes, I don't know, the color runs away with me. <laughs> I just, um, I, I, I just, I'm just drawn to different colors that are probably what I see uh, around me in, uh, in Florida all the time. Yeah, and it was interesting that Tyler remarked on the pavement. Um, so I think that really does speak to that, right? But yeah. you're absorbing color all the time. Um, Laura has another question in the chat, and I think that will be, our last one, um, unless anybody else wants to ask another. Oops, it's hidden for me. So Laura says, you mentioned in your work that the shapes were dancing and was this intentional? And if so, what was your inspiration for this? 
Well, I, I guess the dancing is really just movement. Um, it, diagonals and points and that sort of thing emphasize um, something that it can, can move and change. So uh, my daughter was a dancer. I thought at one point I would be a dancer, but of course uh, I, 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 that wasn't what happened to me. Um, so I am aware of dance and movement. My grandson is also interested in dance. So that's always in the back of my mind. But also uh, the, the forms in her compositions uh, are dynamic. That's another way to say that they respond to dance because um, depending on where you stand in this functions better when you see the pieces in person because of the way that the color and the painting surface interacts with your eye. Uh, the optical illusions that her compositions create um, change depending on where you where you stand. So uh, that's that can be a very pleasing experience and, and exciting to spend time with. And on that note, um, we want to let everybody know, I did put it in the chat, but you can mm -hmm. book your own appointment to come and view the show. Thank you for the plug. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> there's a booking system, an online booking appointment system on Emerson Dorsch's website, which I put in the chat. So you can have your own chance to view at your own distance and you're in your own time and I encourage everybody to do that. <laughs> with your mask yeah, as so your mask. modeled. <laughs> Speaking of, of pleasing experiences, I just, uh, I want to thank you all again for joining us for this BAS members event. Um, it's so great to see these works and to get to talk a little bit more about Art Outside, a project we're all really excited about at the BAS. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, great to spend this time with you and I hope you have a lovely evening. Thank you. So nice. Thank you. Thank you very much for organizing and hosting. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. Have a great evening, everybody. Thank you.